Macho John Madden in El Diamante, Mexico. Next to a very important carretera or interstate highway in Mexico along the east coast of Mexico that leads from the United States down to Central America. And I'm starting, I started with beautiful, peaceful image of the full moon outside of the Aureli restaurant, a very important place to me, and the Diamante Hotel. And I want to do a talk about absolutes and the uh, incredibly destructive power of absolute values. And here I am. You folks on the religious right, if you're going to come for me, this is what I look like, but I'm going to be hard to find in Mexico. This is going to make me no friends on the religious right because the subtitle is, What's Wrong with the Ten Commandments? Ten Commandments are all absolutes. They are a terrible way to try to run a human life. Human life is meant to be made up of dialectics. Brene Brown, who I call the wise woman for our age, a dialectic I've gotten from her that really does run my life is the dialectic between open heart and solid boundaries. Open heart, love, openness, vulnerability, solid boundaries, the capacity to say no, to stop people and things, to get in the way, to take to the streets when George Floyd is killed. I'd like to know what star that is. There's a car, truck, pickup truck on the car terra huge trucks. We may be able to enjoy the violence of a huge truck coming down this road because lots of them do. This sounds like a big truck. It's a lot harder in some ways. It's more subtle to run your life by having to listen to the voice for God as it coaches you about is this a moment for solid boundaries or is this a moment for opening your heart? God is capable of tremendous violence because when God has a plan for your life and always does, it, I don't say he, it, the force, the matrix, life. I like to say life. And so, nonviolence as a policy, as a uh, guide for your life, it can be a great guide for your life. It's a good thing. But don't take it as an absolute. There is a time to punch your racist neighbor so that your black friend doesn't go to jail. There is a time, and there was for me about seven days ago, to kill a dog. Violent, very violent killer dog that was coming down here and attacking our dogs. And I knew that the message I was getting from God was, you're gonna leave here in about a week. And these poor dogs are gonna keep getting attacked by that dog who will not stop. Once he starts attacking, he will not stop. And uh, no one else down here is gonna kill that dog. He needs to be killed, and you need to do it. And I did it. This <laughs> is very unusual behavior for me in general, and especially because I'm a passionate lover of dogs. I love this dog out here in the street. Jason, what a mighty dog he is. And he will get his way, get himself out of the way of this truck. He always does. Oh, he's gonna chase it. He's gonna chase it. <laughs> God took some really violent action with me 
just a little over two and a half months ago, not quite three months ago, right before I got here to El Diamante, God stripped away from me two dogs that I loved very passionately and never would have voluntarily let go of, especially my dog Magic, who had been with me for almost a year and a half and was the best dog of my life, one of the best dogs on the planet. The story is told elsewhere of how it happened, but over the course of one horrific day, the dog Bear, who had been with me for three months, got taken from me, and then three days later, magic was taken from me. Perhaps one of the most heartbreaking events of my life. In the course of three years of nonstop travel through the U.S. and now Mexico, I've given up everything I had. I don't have one possession that I had three years ago, uh, but the hardest, the hardest was magic because what a gorgeous dog he was. And it was, I had to grieve. Doesn't mean you can't grieve. Again, a dialectic, acceptance, surrender, and grieving because on a human level it feels so painful and I still grieve the loss of magic and I've come to understand that it was a time in my life where I need to be nimble. I need to be mobile. I need to be able to jump into cabs and buses. I need to be able to meet with people on the spur of the moment uh, and not have to figure out what to do with the dog. It's right. My life is better in so many ways. Uh, this two and a half months of being carless because my car has been broken down here the whole time would not have been possible. I could not have done this two and a half months with magic. And I never would have come to love Mufafa and Jason and Easy, my little three dog pack down here. Magic wouldn't have allowed that. No, because magic wanted to be my man, and he was. Uh, but I love these dogs so much and I was meant to be their man for a while here uh, so that I could rid that rid this pueblo of that dog and one part of the mission I feel like I'm receiving from God is before I leave I have to convince somebody to pet each of these three dogs because street dogs in Mexico don't get touched and these dogs love being touched. The part of why they worship me, follow me around everywhere, sleep under my car, is because I touch them. Oh God, they want to be touched. And, and it, part of what's been breaking my heart this week is the notion that they might not be. But I think if I, uh, if I do this right, I can find somebody at least one person who will pet each of them. So I'm going to wrap this there. I'm going to go back to the full moon and go back to a peaceful image and install some peace in myself. In about a half an hour, me and these dogs are going to go for a long walk. Nobody takes dogs for walks in this part of Mexico anyway. And they love that too. So, thank you God. Uh, in terms of dialectics, uh, I don't, I'm going to let go of saying dialectics. The, one of the things I love most about Mexico, and especially rural Mexico, is their love for God. Yesterday I was walking down the road with well, maybe a 50-ish lady who's the minister of a, a Pentecostal temple here. And we were talking about why I didn't like her church. And... I immediately dropped my quibbles about why I didn't like the church and said to her, your love for God is so spectacular. It makes me so happy. It's so inspiring. The way people down here will, and when you ask people how they are, they'll say, muy bien, gracias a Dios. Thank you, God. They give credit to God and gratitude to God. And that's the way I want to live my life. I guess if there's any absolute, maybe that's the one absolute is love for God. Yeah.